So in this demonstration we're going to look at how we can create a fold over design to resolve ambiguities that arise because of aliasing within a fractional factorial. So let's first create that fractional factorial design. I come to DOE and I select screen in design. I want the design to contain five factors and I'll take the default fractional factorial design with eight runs. Here's the design. Now let me create some data and I'll analyze the data using the model script. Now I have my model specification which I can run. And here are the results. Let's take a look at the prediction profiler. I don't need the desirability function so I'll just turn that off and I'll just take a closer look at the visual representation of the main effects. So I can see that we have an effect for x2 through to x5, but there doesn't seem to be any effect for x1. So I can screen out x1. But when I look at the parameter estimates, there is an x1, x3 interaction. So to understand that in more detail, let's go and refer to the aliasing pattern associated with this design. So if I bring up the DOE window and just put it side by side against the FIT model, under aliasing of effects, I can see that x1 times x3 is aliased with the x2, x4 interaction. So I can propose an alternative model, a model that only contains the factors x2 through to x5 plus interactions. So instead of x1, x3 interaction, I'd expect there to be an x2, x4 interaction. But what about the other interactions? Let's investigate the model in more detail. If I come back to the model dialog, the model I'm interested in is the one that contains these four factors, but I also want to investigate the two-factor interactions. This gives me a model which has 10 terms, 10 effects that I want to estimate. I don't have that amount of data. I only have eight data points. So I know it's impossible for me to estimate all of those effects. Let me reduce the model to a size which is consistent with the amount of data that I have. I still have a problem here. I can't estimate all of these effects because of the aliasing that we have in the design. If we look at the interaction between x2 and x3, for example, then it's aliased with the main effect x5. So I can't have both x5 and the x2, x3 interaction in the model. Similarly, if I look at x2 times x5, this is aliased with x3, so I can't have both x3 and this two-factor interaction in the model. Just to illustrate that, let me try and fit the model anyway. If I choose Run, I have model output, but it has a singularity associated with it. That's a mathematical terminology for saying we have aliasing within the data. The singularity message says x5 equals x2 times x3, which is exactly what we see in the aliasing. It's telling me that I have a model with x5 and with x2 times x3, but those effects are identical. We can't differentiate between them within the model, so that's going to cause us a problem. So we're going to resolve that ambiguity through the creation of a foldover design. So let me close these windows and just come back to the data table. To create the fold over design, I come to the DOE menu and I select Augment Design. I need to specify the response and my factors and then click OK. What I can now do is choose the fold over option. When I do this, I'm asked to specify which factors I wish to fold over. Well, I just wish to fold over the factors x2 through to x5 because we have already screened out the x1 effect. This creates a design for me which has 16 runs. The first eight runs are the data points we already have plus an additional eight runs which will resolve the ambiguities in, in the data. Let me create the design table. So here I have the design table. 
for purposes of including this data with my simulated results I'm actually going to copy and paste these additional rows into the original data table I get a message here that a columns locked that's because I'm trying to paste into a column which is a formula column but I want that formula column because it's given me my simulated results for the additional eight runs okay so let's analyze this new data I can run the model script again this time I need to re-specify the model so I'm going to select the four factors that I have from the macros I'm going to select factorial to degree 2 this gives me all the effects and all the two-factor interactions and I can now run this model so now we have a model and we can see the estimates for all of the effects if we focus on the sorted effects then we have x5, x4, x3 and x2 just as before we also have two interactions we have an x2 times x3 interaction and an x2 times x4 interaction all of the other effects are negligible let's see how this compares with the simulation so because we're using simulated data in essence we know what the answer should be based on this formula and we'll see how well we've done so the formula contains factors x2 through to x5 and also contains the x2 x3 interaction and the x2 x4 interaction so we've correctly identified all of the effects all of the interactions and if you compare the parameter estimates we have very good agreements with the, the simulation formula